This is Rich from Eat Sleep 360 and in this video I want to guide you through step-by-step -step editing with the Insta360 ONE X mobile app. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about 360 photos and 360 videos, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell so you're told straight away when I upload any new videos. Editing for beginners can be a nightmare and if you're not used to editing at all and then you're introduced to the world of 360 editing there will be times when it will drive you absolutely crazy. In this video I want to make it as simple as possible for those of you that are new to 360 editing so you can start having fun with the app and making short edits of your own content. So the first thing you need to do is open up the app, connect to your camera and download the clip to the phone app. So we're looking for a video clip, so we need to select this icon in the app to find the clip that we have downloaded. As this is just for demo purposes, I'm just going to use this clip which I've previously used on another tutorial. So this is your main viewing window where you'll see your clip and at the bottom is your timeline where you can scroll along to certain points of your video and see any edit points that you've made. So let's start by looking at the icons at the top of the app. The first is a go back button, which simply takes you back to the previous screen that you were on. The next icon is our edit icon, and this is the first page that we will go to when we load up a new clip. So you select this icon, it will take you to the edit screen, and on that screen you'll see various other icons, but the one that we want is the trim icon, which is here. This edit software only trims the start and the finish of the clip, so you can't remove bits from the middle or join bits together. So simply the left icon is where you want the clip to start and the right icon is where you want the clip to end. So select the left icon and now slide your finger along the images at the bottom in your timeline until you get to the point where you want the clip to start. Now select the right hand icon which is your out point, so where you want the clips to end and now we scroll backwards along the timeline at the bottom until you get to the point where you want the clip to finish. So in this case we're only going to choose a 30 second clip to work with. Once you're happy with the length of your clip, now click the tick icon in the top right hand corner. And you can always make changes to the length of your clip later, so don't worry. So now we've trimmed our clip and clicked the tick icon, we can now explore the icons on the original screen where we started. So the first one, and the one that we're all familiar with, is the triangular play button. You play the clip from here and you pause from here. Next along is the aspect ratio, and this is where you can adjust the size of your shot. You can switch between 9x16, 16 by 16 x 9 1x1, 2, 3, 5 to 1, etc. And this will depend on what you're using your video for. The dotted square icon will take a snapshot of whatever you have on your screen at that moment and it will save it to your camera roll. So click this icon, the screen will momentarily flash and then at the top it will say picture saved successfully. If we want to reframe the video, so if we want to point the camera in a different direction then we will use the free capture icon in the bottom right hand corner. And we'll look at this in more detail in a second. Before we do that, I just need to show you that you can move around the image using your fingers and you can change it into a tiny planet mode by pinching the image. You then slide your fingers outwards on the screen to revert back to standard video mode. Now this is really important to remember because at some point you may be trying to do an edit and it will come up with an error message which says free capture is not supported in tiny planet mode. And if this happens, all you need to do is zoom back into the image to get back into standard view mode. So let's look at free capture in more detail. Free capture allows us to change the angle of the camera using pivot points. So when we play the clip and we want the angle of the camera to change in the video, then we stop the clip and we hold our finger on the screen. Or we can press the free capture icon in the bottom right hand corner. When we do either of these two things, it comes up with this menu in the middle. So to start with, we're going to select the first icon on the left, which is pivot point. So once you've selected pivot point, now change the angle of your shot. So now play your clip again, pause the clip and select pivot point again the next time you want something to change. Change the angle of your shot, play the clip and so on and so on. If you want to delete a pivot point, simply select the pivot point and then click on the cross icon. Now when we play the clip back, if we watch it on the timeline, once we hit the pivot point, the, the clip will start to transition. 
and change to the angle that we set the camera to. And then as we approach another pivot point, the same will happen and so on and so on. So there are two other options that we can select when we press onto the screen or select free capture. And the next one we're gonna look at is Smart Track. When we select Smart Track, the app will lock onto a prominent object in the middle of the shot and it will track that object throughout the clip and it will keep it central in the shot. So in this shot, I use Smart Track to track the cow, but it wasn't that smart. It took me several attempts. I think the cow just needed to be a bit bigger in shot because it couldn't really identify it as a separate object that we needed to track. So I've roughly selected the cow with Smart Track. So now the app has created two pivot points and it keeps the cow in the middle of the shot throughout those points. Now the third option that we have with Free Capture is the viewfinder mode. Now this is the easiest and most fun to use. So when you select viewfinder mode, you'll notice that it switches to a live 360 mode. So wherever you move your phone, the image moves with you. So the idea of this mode is that you press and hold the red button and as you press it, you move the phone around to whatever camera angle you want. At the same time, you can slide your finger along to come out to tiny planet mode. And then you slide back to the left to zoom in again. And you do this all live and by keeping your finger held on to the red record button. And as soon as you let go of the button, you finish plotting your camera angles and then you need to select the tick to save. This is the fast and fun way of creating some edits in the app and it puts in all of the pivot points for you. So now that we have our main edit, we can look at other options available in the edit menu. So the first option that we can add is a filter and we can apply a filter to the whole image and then change the intensity of that filter. And there are lots to choose from. This next icon along is an image control feature. If we select this, we can make further specific adjustments to the image, such as contrast, color, brightness, etc. You can also adjust the speed of a shot here, and this is where you'd create hyperlapses, for example. When you select the speed, you then have to select which part of the shot you want to speed up by sliding your finger along the timeline. Press the tick button to confirm, but you won't be able to see a preview of the speed changes to your shot until you export it. And you export it using this icon. And then it will save it in your camera roll or it'll upload it straight to Facebook, etc. The multi-view icon on the right hand side enables you to select a mixed view of your video. And finally, you can add some music either from iTunes or choose from some preloaded music on the app. And then you export the clip here and you're done. If we select the three dots on the top right hand side, this brings up some additional settings. Flow state stabilization, this is on by default and stabilizes your images. But we can also select direction lock. With direction lock on, once you've selected a pivot point, it will follow the direction of the camera. So without direction lock on, if the camera moves around a corner on a bike or on a car, etc., the camera will start to float around and change direction. But if we lock the direction facing forwards, then as the camera moves around the corner, the angle of the shot will also move around the corner as well. It's important to know that when you select direction lock, it will remove all of your pivot points. The logo switch simply allows you to have a logo overlaid on top of your video. And this is where you turn it on and off. You have to go into the main menu on the app first and select settings so you can determine what logo you want to appear. Optimize stitching, this just makes the stitching of the two cameras a lot smoother. And if you have a waterproof case, then you need to select this here, which again will just help with the stitching. If you want to reset your edits, you can select this option here and it will reset all your trim settings and pivot points. I hope this tutorial has given you a good starting point with the app and you're more confident now to get on and start editing on your mobile. If you have any questions about this tutorial or if you want to share your experiences of editing with the app or you have any shortcuts that I may have missed that you want to share with others, then please put them in the comments below. If you want more hints, tips and 360 tutorials, please remember to subscribe and if you learned something new on this video, then please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you on the next video.